Looking off the pier at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography, the horizon is crystal clear. San Diego is lucky to have such an unblemished view of the Pacific Ocean. In other parts of California, looking out to sea often means looking at offshore oil rigs. A lot of people would love to see these things gone. You know, they're very ugly on the horizon. They just want to see clear blue ocean. That's Emily Callahan. She just got her master's in marine biodiversity and conservation from Scripps. For her master's project, Callahan teamed up with another Scripps master's student, Amber Jackson, to explore a seemingly simple question. What should happen to California's offshore rigs once their wells run dry? Should they be completely dismantled and hauled ashore, or should they just stay there? The second option is typically known as a rigs to reef program. And essentially what they do is they take off the upper portion of the rig, they remove it, and transplant it somewhere else in the ocean, either right next to the rig, they might tow it somewhere. The idea is to chop off the platforms, but leave underwater scaffolding in place to conserve all the fish and invertebrates gathered there, to transform these oil drilling machines into long-term artificial reefs. They've been doing this in the Gulf of Mexico for about 40 years now, but they're hoping to bring the same kind of program, different rules and regulations, but the same kind of program to California. To determine whether or not this approach is worth pursuing here, Callahan and Jackson wanted to see if life is actually thriving on California rigs, so they suited up. They're both certified scuba divers. And as part of their research, they explored rigs off of Santa Barbara and Huntington Beach. Amber Jackson describes what they saw on these dives. Every beam and cross beam is covered in electric pink anemones, brittle stars, mussels, scallops the size of tennis balls, completely cover the metal structure. Because the beams are so covered in life, they look almost like fluffy. And I'm trying to think of a better word to say that, but really they look almost fluffy. And then on top of that, you have schools of fish, Garibaldi, Senoritas, um, Blacksmith, all schooling around these platforms. After looking at all sides of the issue, the two explorers reached their verdict. We've come to the conclusion that this would be a successful and beneficial program when implemented in California. And it's just an opportunity for the oil companies to renege on their commitments to clean up these sites when they were first allowed to install the platforms. Linda Kropp is chief counsel at the Environmental Defense Center in Santa Barbara. She opposes rigs to reef because she worries it could lead to long-term pollution, disrupt commercial fishing activity, and endanger passing boats. And so we want to make sure that there's complete cleanup, and the only way that's going to happen is if the platforms are removed. Proponents of rigs to reef contend it's a safe and environmentally friendly process, but they also say they're sensitive to these concerns, especially the concern that they're letting the companies behind some of the worst environmental disasters in history off too easy. No one wants to see that company win and get ahead, but that's kind of looking over the bigger picture. Callahan argues that tearing out rigs is itself harmful. It's a carbon-intensive process that destroys ecosystems decades in the making. Plus, Callahan says, oil companies would have to give some of their savings under rigs to reef back to the state of California for science and conservation. So they do save a lot of money, but a lot of money goes towards good, and that's what's important to focus on. California is currently home to 27 offshore rigs. Many are scheduled for decommissioning in the next five to 10 years. So far, none have been approved under the state's Rigs to Reef program. David Wagner, KPBS News.